Time now for the morning rush. We start with John Smith. The next big weather maker in the form of a cold front, but it's not going to pack much of a punch in terms of precipitation as it works its way across the state today. We'll see a little bit of wind and some cooler temperatures for this afternoon, but the temperatures rebound over the next couple of days. More wind as the storm system drops toward the state over the weekend. A resolution to reduce the penalty of marijuana possession is on its way to Mayor Tim Keller's desk. That resolution is moving forward thanks to a 5-4 to four vote. That means if Mayor Keller signs off on it, low-level pot possession without a valid medical marijuana card would only be citable offense with a $25 ticket and no jail time. Currently, those in possession of an ounce or less of marijuana could be arrested, face up to 15 days in jail, and a fine of $50. More on both sides of this resolution coming up in the Five Facts. David? Happening now, a plan to make a crosswalk where a 12-year-old girl was hit and killed. is safer is given the green light. City Councilors Brad Winter and Diane Gibson co-sponsored the resolution for safer sidewalks, which calls for a task force to help identify which metro schools need improved pedestrian crossings. Now, the signal crosswalk at Cleveland Middle School should be installed by August. On to news happening right now. Police are asking for the public's help identifying the person you see on your TV screens here. It's accused of hitting a man on purpose and then fleeing the scene. Police say it happened around 8 Sunday night at the Flying J truck stop on 98th near I-40. At last check, that victim was listed as critical. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 843 STOP. New this morning, the man accused of throwing a banana peel at comedian Dave Chappelle back in 2015 is now suing the funny man and his presumed bodyguard. That's according to the Santa Fe New Mexican. The report states Christian Englander claims that a man acting as Chappelle's bodyguard struck him in the face twice without provocation while he was being restrained after the incident. The lawsuit also says the alleged assault happened under the clear direction of Chappelle. On to news happening right now. A Rio Rancho homeowner is fighting back against his homeowners association that's telling him to remove a religious statue. Bill Maldonado says the HOA is giving him until next week to remove that small statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It sits right in his front yard. Maldonado says it's his right to religious expression and that the small statue has been there for a long time. The HOA did not return our call for comment. Happening now, gubernatorial candidate Jeff Apodaca has filed a lawsuit claiming State Senator Joseph Cervantes failed to submit enough petition signatures to run for the Democratic nomination. The lawsuit also alleges Cervantes submitted about 1,400 signatures that are not valid. Congresswoman Michelle Lujan Grisham is also seeking the Democratic nomination to run against Republican Congressman Steve Pierce. Pierce has no primary challengers. Happening right now, President Trump is again calling on Congress to pass tougher immigration laws. The president now says migrants are taking advantage of policies that allow them to stay in the U.S. illegally. He's now accusing Democrats of standing in the way of improved border security. However, during a recent budget battle, Democrats say it was the president who turned down a deal to fully fund his border wall in exchange for DACA protections. Take a look at your screen. These clear backpacks are now the only ones allowed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. It's part of new security measures following the shooting that left 17 people dead in February. Some students used the bags as a political statement, putting a price tag on them to protest politicians who accept money from the National Rifle Association by putting a price on each student. Then along those lines, New Mexico School District is taking down its gun-free zone signs, and the district will no longer have gun-free zones. According to the Deming Headlights, Superintendent Arsenio Romero requested the removal from all Deming public schools. This, as a district, discusses bringing armed school resource officers to schools. Happening now, Los Alamos National Lab faces a fine, exceeding fine, or for exceeding time limits for storing hazardous waste. Lionel says it will now review the rules and comply the best it can. According to the Los Alamos Monitor, state officials say the lab stored two waste containers over the 90-day storage time limit and three others over a one-year time limit. Both are violations that have up to $10,000 a day fines. John? Today's cold front is going to lead to occasionally breezy conditions for the Albuquerque metro area, so the metro thread index only out of one. We're going to see a little bit more wind as we head over the next couple of days. David? Happening now, the biopark is now saying it could be months before we see the $12 million penguin chill exhibit open for business. Officials say they still have to finish construction, landscaping inside and out, then perform system tests for 30 days. This also means getting the penguins acclimated to their new home. Officials tell us the otter exhibit at the aquarium could also be open by early June. That is reportedly months behind schedule as well. 
We're looking ahead for you on this Tuesday morning. You'll soon see, you'll soon be able to dig into a dozen new food items at Ice Tubs Park, like the Buffalo Chicken Cheeseburger and the Green Chile Relleno Burger. There's also new desserts like funnel cake fries with cheesecake, chocolate sauce, and frosting. The Topes Home Opener is next Tuesday. Mark your calendars. On to new news this morning. A new study from New York University shows when we create foods that are unhealthy for us, we are willing to pay more for them. Researchers hope these findings will help them better understand how cravings affect our choices and our behavior. Ah, interesting. That's what it is. All right, new this morning, a vaccine to prevent Zika could virtually eliminate all prenatal infections related to the mosquito-borne virus. This is according to researchers at Yale School of Public Health. They used computer models to make their estimates. Of course, we all know Zika can cause severe birth defects in babies. All right, now let's take a look at traffic as you head out the door this morning. And right now, it looks like things are running smoothly. The freeways running smoothly, both I-25 and I-40. Now, just expect over the next hour or so to see a little bit of that usual slowing on I-40 eastbound between Coors and the Big Eye, and also in that construction zone between Montgomery and uh, Paseo del Norte on I-25. Happening now, the Make-A-Wish Foundation has launched a month-long World Wish Day campaign. The nonprofit hopes to break the into the Guinness Book of World Records at the end of this month with a live event where numerous wishes will be granted at the same time for kids fighting critical illnesses and a good way to get in the record books by doing something good. Yeah. All right, now, now time for the five facts. We're start with number five here. The search is on for the next artist to design the official Zobra poster and T-shirt. The Kiwanis Club of Santa Fe announced they're looking for submissions for its annual Annual art contest. Judges are looking for artwork with a 1960s theme to represent its decades project. A 10 year countdown to Old Man Gloom's 100th birthday. Submissions are due by May 4th. We did post all the information for you at always on KRQE.com. He doesn't look a day over 25. At number four, the fight is on to save dozens of towering trees near Albuquerque's Country Club neighborhood. Members of the community say the city is trying to yank them down. Nine elm trees were cut by the city two weeks ago on Laguna Boulevard, which they deemed dangerous. Then the city, then days later, the city told the community it's planning on cutting down all 33 elm trees. The city's solid waste department says in a statement, a second assessment revealed more trees are diseased and should be removed. Neighbors are now bringing in their own expert to get a second opinion. At number three, we are looking at a little bit of a cool down for this afternoon. Temperatures will top out in the upper 60s, still a little bit above average for this time of the year. We'll warm back up over the next couple of days. Number two now, all eyes are on Wall Street this morning, where we wait to see if the market will improve today. This after seeing a dramatic drop. As you wake up, Asian markets are down slightly. A big sell-off on Monday saw the Dow drop more than 400 points. The Nasdaq plunge almost 3%. Some blame several technology companies who have seen their market value drop by more than $300 billion in the past two weeks. Some blame President Trump for publicly criticizing Amazon's business practices. Others are pointing the finger at Facebook for their user data breach. And at number one, a resolution to legalize small amounts of marijuana is on its way to Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller's desk. This after the city council voted in favor of decriminalizing an ounce or less of marijuana late last night. That resolution is moving forward thanks to a 5-4 to four vote. That means if Mayor Keller signs off on it, low-level pot possession without a valid medical marijuana card would only be, citable, uh, be a citable offense with a $25 ticket and no jail time. City, city councilors Pat Davis and Isaac Benton proposed the plan, while other councilors like District 5 Councilor Cynthia Borrego voted against it. Okay.